Hi, Dr. P here to talk about a game design motto that can mean several very different things. Don't make me think. And my thanks to Steve Krug, who wrote a well-known book about website usability with this title. He means, don't make people think in order to have to find things on websites. Make it easy for them to find what they need. And that makes perfectly good sense. Now, most games involve some thinking, but we can adopt this motto to mean several different things. The obvious one to me is don't make players think about anything other than the gameplay of the game. Don't distract them from playing the game. Unfortunately, it can also mean don't make me think at all. And that's an attitude that's become more common in hobby gaming lately, but it's always been the norm in party and family games. So we have three meanings, really. The first is, don't make people think about the interface and how they manipulate the game, or how they command the game. It should be second nature. The second is the way it is, though I don't like it. Don't make people have to think when they play a game. This is already very common in video games, with many games being athleticware rather than brainware, where athleticism and physical skills dominate. Many F2P games, free to play, have also become reward-based rather than consequence-based because the makers of the game need to keep people involved until the time at which they decide to spend some money. So they give lots of things to the players, naturally. The third meaning is what I referred to to begin with, make people think only about the gameplay of the game. So I'm going to go through these. Number one, don't make me think about the interface. Even tabletop games have interfaces. The interface is obvious in video games, but it's there in tabletop games. The difference is tabletop games have a much longer history, and people are so used to having pieces and moving them around on a board or playing a game with cards that they don't think about the interface. The interface is the way that you tell the game what to do, and the game tells you what to do. So, players should not have to remember things like in a tabletop game, remember every third turn. And of course, in a computer game, the computer takes care of that. Players shouldn't have to do arithmetic unless it's necessary to good gameplay. Players shouldn't have to remember odd aspects of victory conditions unless it's necessary to the game. Players shouldn't have to look at combat tables and of course, in a video game, and one of the reasons why video games are popular, this is all taken care of by the game. Although, if you think about it, if something happens every third turn, a player has to be aware that that's going on, even if the computer is keeping track. So ideally, the computer has to tell the player somewhere how long it's going to be before that third turn comes up. Now, in general, in interfaces, you have the opposite of what is often praised in games. Innovation is often praised in games, although it's rarely real innovation. But innovation in the user interface is dangerous because familiarity, not newness, makes interfaces easier. When people say that something is intuitive in conjunction with user interfaces or games generally, usually they really mean it's familiar, not that there's something that's natural to the human condition there. They just mean familiar. The second meaning, don't make people think when they play a game. Many people want to be entertained when they play a game. They don't want to put in an effort. They are passive rather than active. It's like they want to watch a movie like The Avengers. Now, I like The Avengers, but to me, games are quite different from movies. But for many people these days, there doesn't seem to be much difference. They want to be given things, they want to be rewarded for participation, they don't want to have to earn anything. Again, this attitude used to be confined to party and family games, but it's now common in hobby games. How can you achieve this less thinking? Well, there are lots of ways to do this. For example, reduce the number of plausible choices for each decision, and reduce the number of decisions. 
provide catch-up mechanisms so that people who are mostly not paying attention or not thinking about what's going on in the game still have a chance to win at the end. Another thing you can do is make it obvious how you need to play to win. I call it transparency. Provide well-signed posted paths to victory so that people don't have to figure these things out. Of course, you can go to dexterity games. Dexterity games kind of combine athletic wear and brain wear. You don't have to think, or at least not think nearly as much. Uh, on the other hand, old codgers and naturally slow folk, and I'm both, are not fans of this kind of game because we're not good at it. When I used to play Total Annihilation in the late 90s, an RTS game, I slowed it down to dead slow or close to it in order to enjoy it so I could turn it back into a thinking game instead of a reaction speed game. There are lots of examples of dexterity games on the tabletop, the British card game Snap, the failed collectible game Clout Fantasy, where you pitched what was amounted to poker chips onto the floor or onto a table. Pitch Car, which is a racing game, traditional game carom, caroms, lots of other dexterity games. And of course, a great many video games. M perhaps, certainly the majority of AAA games, console games, are dexterity games and athletic wear. Now the third meaning is don't make me think about anything other than gameplay. Or, to put it another way, don't put anything into the game that isn't important to the strategies of playing the game. I think this is a worthy goal. This is an ideal that you should try to achieve. And it's important to players who want to earn what they get from a game rather than be rewarded for participation. This comes back to my motto, which you've probably heard before. A designer knows he has achieved perfection, not when there is nothing left to add, but when there is nothing left to take away. Now what's the other side of this third meaning? That other side is, I feel stupid. People play a game that requires a lot of thinking, they don't do well, and they feel stupid. Now a friend of mine, Jeffro Johnson, played one of my prototypes, and he said this, but he said, that's okay, because I'm the old style kind of player, and I recognize that I screwed up and I can become better. I can overcome my errors. I can do better the next time. That's okay for that sort of player, but for the people who are waiting to be entertained, that's not good. They don't want to feel uncomfortable. When you come down to it, it's the age of comfort. People are brought up to avoid any kind of pain or discomfort. And if those people are waiting to be entertained, then a game that makes them feel stupid is not going to work well for them. Of course, there are lots of gamers somewhere between these two extremes. In general, the broader the appeal of your game, the less you can make people think. Thanks for listening.